Hello everybody, my name is Corby Action, and I want to make a discussion video. I know I've been gone for a little while. It's been about two months. I'm not really going to count my... Actually, no. It's been about four weeks since I've actually been away from uploading any videos whatsoever. What changed? What happened? Where have I been? Well, I'm about to answer that. But before I begin ranting along and telling you what's on my mind and what I have been doing since the pandemic and what I have been doing for the past for the past few weeks, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if there's any videos you would like for me to be active, just comment down below with the link to the video. So, to answer the question of where have I been, honestly, I've been home. Monday through Friday, I've been home. Now, for those who don't know me, I'm going to just explain everything. Monday through Friday, I'm home. I have a sibling who is autistic. He has a disability, so he is not able to watch after himself. He needs to be supervised 24-7. So while my mother works, I'm here all day watching him. As much as I would like to go outside, even though there's nothing to do out there, at times I want to go outside, but unfortunately I can't because I'm watching my brother. And so because I'm watching my brother, I don't want to risk taking him outside with me. As much as that may sound easy or may seem to be easy, it's not. Because unfortunately my brother, he does not have the tolerance. He does not have the long attention span to keep a mask on his face. I will place a mask on his face, give it about 10 to 15 minutes. If you ever look away, if I ever turn my back uh, towards him, he'll end up taking it off or he'll adjust it in a way to where the mask is not covering his mouth and his nose. When you wear a mask, it's supposed to cover your mouth and it's supposed to cover your nose. He, the way he wears it, it's, he doesn't even know how to apply the mask on his face. He gets the concept, he'll wrap it around his face, but no. So there's so many times where I could have just taken him outside just to get some fresh air. The air may not be very fresh, but it beats me staying home all day. I choose not to do that because chances are I don't want him to keep taking off his mask and I get annoyed and I'm going to end up putting it back on. So as far as anybody may be asking this question, such as, Corey, why, why don't you just take your brother outside? That way both of you can get fresh air. That's the reason why. Because he's, because one, one I can just see one of these days, I don't, he, my brother's unfortunately unpredictable. I don't know how he's going to react in settings. I've known, I know him for all my life. So yeah, I would know, but he's autistic. So unfortunately, depending on the severity of autism, they have different uh, levels and they do things differently. So let's say if I do end up taking him to the store, let's say if I do end up going outside altogether, let's say if I do go to a store, I don't know what my brother's going to do. I don't know if he's going to take off his mask. He doesn't even know how to cover his own mouth when he sneezes or cough. And that's like the number one thing now. If you call for sneeze, people are going to overreact. Even though it may not mean anything necessarily, you may not have the symptoms, you may not even have COVID. But people don't know that. They're going to assume that because you sneezed or coughed, they're going to do whatever they can to get away from you. And to also just to make sure that they are safe as well. So, in essence, me taking my brother outside and taking him to the store and such forth, I don't see that possibility ever happening. If I ever go outside, it will have to be by myself. And if I ever go to the store, it would have to be by myself. Why? Because I don't want to deal with people out there who just doesn't understand autism. They may understand, but I don't want to be in that situation. I wouldn't want to be in that situation. So I'm doing what I can to, you know, stay indoors at uh, for the most part. Now, I know I didn't mention Saturday and Sundays. Saturdays and Sundays are the only two days where I'm actually going outside. Saturdays and Sundays, I like to do long walks. That's me, to keep my body going, you know? That's what I like to do. I like to walk. And when I walk, I, like, I can go for hours. 
So Saturday and Sunday, two things I'm doing. I'm either going outside, going for a long walk. It could be hours. It could just be around the block for be, I don't know, two hours. I can go for long walks. I live in Co-op City in the Bronx. So when I walk, I usually walk around Co-op City. Sometimes I even walk up uh, the strip of of Gun Hill Road sometimes. But um, Saturdays and Sunday, that's pretty much what I do. It's either that, and sometimes I tend to do it like in the middle of the day, if not towards the end of the day. About I try to do it at least 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. I try not to do it so often, and I also try not to do it in the dark where, you know, where it's unsafe. Consider that daylight savings have taken an effect. At 5 o'clock is pretty much the end of the day. 5 o'clock is dark. Sometimes I go to my friend's house as well. I try to have a good time there. I do sometimes, if I'm being honest. Uh, but that's what I'm doing right now. Um, am I getting paid for the things that I'm doing for my brother? Because pretty much I'm a caregiver. Yes and no. Yes, I'm getting paid because unemployment is giving me some money. And no, because when I apply for a caregiver, the application didn't really accept it. They didn't accept my application because it wasn't accepting any applicants at the moment or at this time. And the amount of money that unemployment gives me is not enough. I don't get paid enough to do what I'm doing here 24-7. Some people will probably end up saying, well, you shouldn't have to, well, you shouldn't have to worry about getting paid. This is an obligation and such for. I can see your point, but put yourself in my shoes real quick. You're pretty much doing sitting here 24-7. I sleep where I work. It's so frustrating and it's so hard. I don't know what to do with myself half of the time. But yes, I eat where I work. I sleep where I work. I don't get paid enough to do what I do. Some people, whoever may be watching this video, who friends or family who may know me and my brother, you may not see my brother as hard work until he starts touching and getting into things. That's when you're going to have to start being mobile and start chasing after him and making sure he doesn't do anything else. The thing is, my brother is very quick. He's quick. If, you not, if you're not watching my brother, if I'm not watching my brother, Chances are he's going to get into something. You may not know what it is at the moment until it is missing. It just makes you go crazy. Half of the things, I don't mean to do it half of the time, but half of the things I tend to blame my brother for when it comes to missing. Sometimes it's just me. So many things that goes on in my mind, sometimes I tend to blame somebody. I don't really mean to blame my brother because at the end of the day, the condition that he has, he's not able to control. But it's just so frustrating. It's also frustrating considering that I'm in the house all day. So I guess in, that, in a way, I apologize if I have not been uploading anything, even though I may have some free time on my hands. It's just that sometimes I don't wake up early enough to where I would like to start my day. Truth be told, I have not been waking up lately. I only wake up to do what I need to do throughout the day. But the majority of the times, the majority of the times I don't, the majority of the times I don't wake up. I tend not to because I'm not motivated to wake up half of the time. Half of the time I uh, wake up, it's too early for me to wake up. Sometimes I like to sleep in. If I'm not, if I'm being honest with myself, I usually wake up around two o'clock. Not usually, but sometimes I wake up around two o'clock in the afternoon. Today I happened to wake up at two o'clock. Well, no, today I actually woke up. Uh, I woke up. I'm, on, I'm not going to say early. I woke up around twelve o'clock in the afternoon. That's the time that I woke up. I stayed up all night uh, yesterday. I don't even remember the last time. I don't even remember the time that I went to sleep yesterday. But it's just that if I wake up early in the morning, what am I going to do? The fact of the matter is, here's another thing too. My brother, he uh, he wakes up early in the morning. It's one thing about autistic people, one thing about autism, they follow a routine that is engraved in their minds. Before the pandemic, my brother would always go to his program. He would always wake up 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning. I don't know how he does it. He just does it. He wakes up early in the morning. He's ready to go to his program. He's ready. He will have his clothes together and everything. He don't put it together. My mother would do that. And this was around the time that I was working. And I only worked for about four months, by the way. 
beforehand, I wasn't even working at all. I was drastically looking for work. I've been going to interviews after interviews. And it's just so unfortunate because now that I found the place where I was working, because I don't know if anyone else remember, but I was saying on, on this channel that I work in LaGuardia Airport. I have only, it hasn't even been about five to six months. And because of the, pandem the pandemic, I got laid off. I got laid off. And so because I got laid off, and because I'm watching over my brother, I can't even go to work. I can't even ap apply to go to work. So yes, it may be true that some occupations may be accepting people right now. It may be true that some jobs and some bosses may be hiring folks. But even if that was the case, I would not be able to do so because who is going to watch my brother at the end? I don't have anybody else in my family, unfortunately, that would be able to take on that role to do it. My mother is weary. She can only do so much. She works an eight, seven to a seven to eight hour shift. It's hard. It's very hard. It's frustrating, in fact. This is why sometimes I don't open my mouth and tell people what's on my mind and tell people how I feel. Because at times I feel that some people don't fathom or not going to be able to understand how I feel. Or be selfish to the point where they compare and make it all about themselves. They, to, simply, to put it simply, they just would not understand and wouldn't be able to do anything to change the situation. So, sometimes I just feel down and I have been feeling lonely lately. Yes, I do have a group of friends who I can go to and I have a group of friends that I can talk to. But once we finish the conversation, it's just pretty much that's it. True, I have my PlayStation and I tend to keep myself occupied by being on that. I recently bought my a new game, Miles Morales. I finished that in about three days because I'm a gamer. I'm, that's that's what I do, man. I got 100% on the trophy altogether, but I get bored once again. There's nothing left for me to do. And like I was saying, and like I said before, what I do for my brother, considered that I'm, I see myself as a caregiver, I don't get paid enough. So it's like, what's the, even the point? I have no other choice but to do it. I feed them, I bathe them. I may not do half of the things that my mother do, but when I do it, I do it. I take a sacrifice because I do a lot. And sometimes I tend to be viewed as, I tend to view myself as an underdog because not many people acknowledge it, acknowledges it. I don't get the uh, recognition per se. I, I'll use the word recognition for the time being. I don't really, I don't really, uh, I don't really get it as much. People know that I have an autistic sibling. People know or have an idea of what I may be going through, but they don't know really. And so this is just me explaining what I have been going through, what's on my mind and such for. And I wanted to put on my channel as well because I want other people to be a little bit aware of what's on my mind. And um, yes, that's pretty much what I have to say about that. Um, I don't know what to do now. I, I honestly don't know. It's just been so hard. And I'm on my channel right now and I've been looking at my consistencies. I've been looking at the amount of times that I've been uploading my videos, how long ago I have been uploading my videos, how often have I been uploading my videos. But all of them are from two to three months ago. And the last time I uploaded a video was a redirect to a Justice Lee movie. So, and then my mother wants to have a sit down with me today, briefly, and talking about how there's maybe a potential wave two of the pandemic. And so she tells me that I can't even go outside now. I didn't answer at all. I didn't say anything at all. I didn't even say, yeah, okay. I didn't say nothing because I have a lot to say to my mother regarding that. Now, it's one thing if everything is closing, but at the, end, but at the, at the moment, everything is open. And I know to wear a mask and I know how serious it is out there. I don't want anyone to believe that I'm naive or don't know or can care less about what's going on in the world for that I'm just thinking about myself as if everything just evolves around me. No, I've been out there. And honestly, I can't really complain. I know there's a few, I don't make a big deal as much as everyone else has been making a big deal. When I'm out there, some people tend to not wear a mask, some people. But I'm not focusing on them. I'm focusing on myself. 
I'm not going to be the type of individual that is going to go to the person and tell them or ask them to put on a mask. I don't want to look for a fight and my intentions may not be to look for a fight. And I know that the intentions may be uh, the same as yours. You may, when you ask a person or tell a person to put on the mask, your intentions may not to be looking for a fight necessarily, but maybe the person who's not wearing a mask are looking for a reason to retaliate when it comes to you asking or telling them to put on a mask. Putting, having a mask on is important. Having a mask not only protects yourself from others, but you're protecting others as well. You're protecting your loved ones. And for a person to believe that this COVID is a hoax, or a lie, a myth, it doesn't even exist. That's baffling and that's comical in my opinion. If you're the one who believe, if you honestly believe that it doesn't exist, or if you honestly believe that people can't die or people are not dying from it, then it's time for you to wake up. Wake up. Because believe it or not, it may not be, it may not be the people around your age bracket that is dying. But think about the older ones. Think about the ones who, um, you know, doesn't have a strong immune system. That's who is impacting most. It's impacting those who are older, up in age, those who have less white blood cells, which, by the way, you need in order to fight a various amount of illness to begin with. So I would only hope for a person to wake up and see that the COVID is very dangerous. Now, here's another thing, too. I'm not really the type that be so drastic, uh, hysterical over it. Now, I'm calm. I am normally am calm for the most part. So, unfortunately, I'm speaking of an unfortunate scenario. If I ever catch COVID and consider that I'm young and I'm going to take advantage of my youth for that, I would be able to fight a certain amount of illnesses if I am supposed to have it. I'm just simply going to take remedies and hopefully I will fight it all. They say to stay in your house 7 to 14 days if one experiences the symptoms or if one has COVID, rather. I don't really know how that would help. I, don't, I really don't know. But I respect the law enough and I respect the rules and what's going on enough to where I will do it. So if I do have COVID, I'm just best for me to just stay in the house until I feel better. Perhaps get a checkup to see if I'm still positive or if I'm now negative. But, yeah. So, for my mother to say to not go outside, I don't think I can do that. I'm sorry. At the beginning of the year, around March, April, May, I've been staying indoors. Later on, I've been going outside. And it's been for me going to the store, to me going to someone's house, and for me to just have long walks. Those are the three things that I have been doing when it comes to me going outside. Long walks. I tend to go to downtown Manhattan sometimes, too. Long walks, I tend to go to my friend's house, or I tend to go to the store. Sometimes it could just be all three combined. I would just walk to the store, and then I would go to my friend's house. Sometimes I, I at one point, I halfway made it to my friend's house. I walked until I got tired, and I just decided to take the bus. Speaking of which, man, man, oh, man, I know a lot of people miss not using the Metro card. They would just jump on the back of the bus, and that would have been that. Now we're back to using Metro cards. Fortunately for me, I can just use Apple Pay and be on my way to wherever I need to go. But um, yes, for those who may be questioning uh, my whereabouts and where have I been and why have I not been uploading, this is why. Because of the situation that I am dealing at home. Now, like I said before, I don't, unfor I don't, I unfortunately don't get paid enough to do what I do, and I'm and I'm dying to go back to work. And the thing is, I can't even go back to work. I worked in LaGuardia. I can't even go back to there because more than likely I've been terminated. Uh, a worker from LaGuardia, I'm guessing that she's the uh, she's a coordinator or, some, uh, or something like that. She sent me an email. This was about in the month of October. She sent me an email saying that I have to attend an orientation if I want to go back to work. And if I don't go back to work, then chances are that I'm going to have to get terminated. And you know how they, the old jingle goes. They intend to, like, you know, encourage you encourage you to, uh, you know, feel free to apply back. Like, okay. As much as I may not have been fond of the position that I was doing, I still want to work. 
because I don't, I'm not lazy. I'm a hustler and I like to work. And this may be work and I'm not complaining of the work that I'm doing now. Truly, if I'm being honest, I don't mind doing it. It's just that it takes its toll. It gets annoying. It's, it's very frustrating. It's overwhelming. Very overwhelming. The unemployment doesn't give me enough money to do what I'm doing. Caregivers are supposed to get how much, how much? I don't even know how much they get. I'm pretty sure it's much more than what the unemployment has been giving me. The unemployment, they uh, at the very beginning when I first applied, they was doing the whole $600 thing. But now I'm only getting about a solid $100. A little bit over that, but it's not enough. And then when I want to buy something for myself, I tend to feel guilty, if not nervous, because the money that I have in my account, I'm going to end up running out of it. And then sooner or later, I won't be able to provide for myself. And I'm going to go right back to square one, going to my mother for everything. And I don't want to be that in that predicament. I don't want to even be in that position to where I got to ask my mom, can you get this? Can you get that? When I should be able to get it for myself. I'm not going to say how much money I have. I'm suffice of the amount of money I have at the moment. But I can see that being depleted simply because of things that I may want to get in the future. There's so many things that I, as an individual, want to get. But I stop myself because I may not have enough in the future for myself. I save yes. And it's hard because half of the times I've got to get something. It's, it's frustrating. Half of the time I don't even know what I want to do. I don't. So this is my struggle. Maybe in the future it will get better for me. Maybe, maybe not. I honestly don't even know what the future may await. But um, that's what I have been dealing with. That's what I have been doing. And um, I'm, I'm not really as open or I don't like to be open with my thoughts or with the things that I go through. But since I was already ranting along for the past 20 minutes or so, I figured I might as well. I'm a quiet person, and I guess it has its pros and its cons. A, part, a quiet person tends to, you know, open their mouths whenever they need to. Like, once they start talking, they'll talk, and that's me. Once I start talking, I'll continue on talking, and I can go on and on for an extended period of time. I'm pretty sure anybody knows this by now. If you watch my channel, sometimes my videos tend to be long because of the amount of talking that I do. It happens. Sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a habit. I can control that habit. That's a difference. Sometimes habits cannot be controlled depending on what type of habit. Me rambling along, I can control that. I know when to stop talking and when to start talking. I'm that uh, disciplined. So, yeah. But um, it's uh, it's been it's been really hard. It honestly has been. What my what are my thoughts about what's going on now? Honestly, here's here's what I have to say, and this is gonna be me without some sounding hypocritical or whatever the case may be. If you don't need to go outside, and it's one thing if you do go outside whether it's something quite similar to what I'm doing, either going to a friend's house or family's house, or if you're going for a walk, put on your mask and keep it on. You decrease the chance of you getting COVID. You decrease it by a lot when you uh, keep your mask on. I know it may be hard for one to breathe and such for, and if you honestly don't want to wear a mask, stay home. There's, your, there's the answer to that. Stay home. If you don't feel like putting on a mask, stay home. In the elevator, in my elevator, in my building, four people is able to get on the elevator. Four. Sometimes they more than four people get on the elevator. I'm, I don't get frustrated. It's hard for me to distance myself, but I'm, I don't get frustrated. I'm very composed. I'm, ready, I'm very calm uh, when it comes to something like that. I don't overreact. It's something that is bound to happen. Yes, it is unfortunate, but I just deal with it. Some people may end up saying, well, Corey, you, you just being too, you're being too soft and such forth. If I was you, I would have gotten off the elevator and such forth. Or, well, that's you. Me, I'm, I'm calm. And I'm not going to show no signs of 
whatever the case may be. So, um, the majority of the times, half of the people who get on the elevator doesn't have a mask on. And actually, I I experienced it like at least eight or nine times of a person getting on the elevator and they didn't have a mask on. It happens sometimes. It shouldn't happen. It really shouldn't. One should always have a mask on at all times, but they don't. My mother, on the other hand, I can't speak for myself, but my mother would get frustrated. Her experience was she would avoid a person, an extra person to get on the elevator because the capacity is four people. True that you, you can fit up to six people in the elevator, but she's not with all of that. She's not like me. She, she would either just take the stairs, she would wait for another one, or if she's already on the elevator and then one more person is trying to get on, she would just try to stop them from getting on. But everybody has their ways of handling things. I don't do things too drastic and I'm not hysterical uh, when it comes to uh, me dealing with COVID. I deal, it, I deal with it quite fairly. It's unfortunate what goes on in the world, but I, I mean, I just deal with it. I deal with it. So me going outside, I'm always going to have my mask on. And if you know me around the neighborhood, you will always catch me with a mask on. It's one thing if I'm all by myself and my mask is like below my nose and I'm breathing through my nostril. But in general, when I'm going to stores, when I'm going inside of a mall, even when I'm going on public transportation, such as the trains and the bus, I have my mask on. And I'm going to continue on having my mask on until further notice. And I know it's frustrating. Trust me, I know it's frustrating. It's frustrating for me. But I know the thing is, I have never once complained about me having a mask on. Me, I didn't mind wearing a mask. For the sake of other people, for them not to get sick, and for myself, I didn't mind wearing a mask. I know it can be annoying. Very annoying. Me, I don't like sweating. And I tend to find myself sweating a lot by doing minimum activities. I could just go for a walk. Sometimes I do sweat. I'm thankful that it's almost winter and I'm thankful that the temperature around where I'm at is below 50 because if I ever do sweat or if I do get overheated, well, here comes the coldness. Here's the wind blowing the sweat away. So thank goodness for that. But other than that, me, I just, I'm chill. I don't overreact. Now, um, I hope to not overreact, but um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it about uh, for me. So uh, that's pretty much it. I don't think I have anything else for me to say. I pretty much just summarize everything else. Um, I feel like I need to go to therapy and explain to my therapist and tell my therapist what goes on and such forth. But at the same time, I don't find it to be necessary. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I have a lot going on in my mind. What I'm telling you is pretty much the main parts of the things that goes on in my mind. I don't, I try not to go beyond that breach and explain every single thing because I don't want to get too personal. This is as personal as it gets. I'm telling you about my sibling. I'm telling you that dealing with my sibling is hard work. Me being in the house, 24 seven is hard work. And not every Saturday and Sundays I go outside too. I don't want to make it sound like I do go outside every Saturday and Sunday. No, I don't. I'm put, I was insinuating, I was pretty much saying that I'm free Saturday and Sunday to where I can go outside. Sometimes I do go outside, sometimes I don't. But I was just saying that's what I do when I do go outside. When I do go outside, I either go for my walks, I either go to the store, or I'll go to my friend's house. Sometimes it's a combination of those three. But, um, yes, that's pretty much what I have been doing. And there goes my brother again, turning off the light. And he closes the door because he's ready to go to sleep. It is pretty much 12.05 and Cyber Monday is over. I'm fortunate enough that I was able to buy something. I bought a bottle of cologne. But at the same time, I think to myself, was it even worth it? I'm not even going out as often for people to recognize 
my the unique smell of the cologne. So, and I like I said before in the middle of the video, in the video as I was explaining, I was saying that sometimes I find I don't want to spend too much money for that the money that I get is not enough. I don't want to be greedy. I don't mean to sound greedy, but it's like all this work that I'm doing, I don't want it to be for nothing. And maybe some people would view it as, oh, well, the things that I'm doing is not for some, it's not for nothing, it's for something. I don't feel that way. I don't feel that the, the things that I'm doing at home is for something. I have no other choice but to do it. It's not that I want to do it, and it's not even that I need to do it. It's that I have to do it because no one else is able to do it. I can't tell or oh, bring my brother to my grandmother. I can't do that. My grandmother's up in age. I'm thankful that she's still alive. I'm thankful she's alive. But I can't do that. Not to her. No one else in my family is able to watch my brother the way I can. I'm the only one who's capable of watching over my brother. I'm the only one that's able to even keep up with him. I'm the only one who's stronger than him. And he's 22. I'm just 20. So I'm glad enough that I'm able to at least active at least keep up with him. Sometimes I just feel like having a mental breakdown because of the things that I, because of the stress, so much stress. So much stress. And some the reason why I go outside is to release those stress. People may have their ways of releasing stress. My way of releasing is by doing long walks. If you like to walk, and if you know me, I'm here. I'll be walking. I don't care where. I don't care how far. I'm walking. That is what I'm going to do. So, I have a treadmill at home too. Yes, I could run on the treadmill, but it's completely different compared to me going outside. It's completely different. It brings my sanity level to a decent a percentage. If I stay indoors with my brother all the time, I'm going to go insane. I am. I'm going to go insane. And it's not fair. And for people to say, oh, well, what I'm doing, I have no other choice but to do it. No, you always have a choice. In fact, there's always a choice. Some choices may, may come close to home. Some others, some other choices may not. You don't have to work, but just prepare for the consequences if you just decide not to work. People tend to do that. You have to work, but you don't have to really. Yeah, you do have to in order to, for you to make a living. But you don't also have to at the same time. That's an obligation. That's a responsibility. You're getting paid for what you're doing. I'm not. I'm not getting paid for what I'm doing at all. This is waste of time in my opinion. To be blunt, this is a waste of time. It is. It's frustrating. Very. There's nothing else I can do. There's nothing else I can do. And as far as me asking or telling my mother that she should be paying me to do all of this, because I don't have to do it and I shouldn't have to do it. I don't want to put that burden on my mother. I don't want to do that to my mother to where not only now she has, she has a lot going on. Don't you know that she's a single mother too? It's just me, my mother and my brother. My father's dead. I don't want to do that to my mother to where it comes out of her pocket where she has to give me a half of a percentage of what she gets every time she gets paid. I don't want to do that. So whoever suggests that, yes, I agree with you, but I don't go as far as going to my mother and confronting, putting my foot down and saying, no, I should get paid by doing this. I could do that. May or may not be respectful, but I just don't do it. Why? Because I don't want to be in that position. I definitely don't want to put her in that position. So I just stay quiet and I just continue on doing it. And she knows how frustrating it is. She thanks me. She tries to encourage me 
She tries to encourage me. I don't feel encouraged sometimes. But I guess that's just what it is for right now. Sometimes I feel like crossing the line definitely and say, no, this is insane. I'm not going to do this anymore. And I feel like telling my mother this half of the time. I don't, I don't, because I don't want to put her position, put her in that position. She already has to make a bunch of decisions as it is. Do you really think that I want to go as far as saying I'm giving you until January or February to do something with my brother, to send him to a program or send him away somewhere so I can get a job and live on for my life? No. That's something that she's not able to get uh, control over. She's not able to do something like, I mean, she can, but that takes time. Currently, right now, my brother, it's, I'm not even going to get into that information. I'm not. I don't want to be too personal with the things that I say. I think me telling you what I'm dealing with my brother is already personal enough. But I'm not going to get as far as all of that. I'm not going to go there. But it's frustrating. I don't want to want to do that to my mother to where now she has to make a tougher choice. Now she got to rush her decision. Now she got extra work to do. Consider that she's an essential worker. So I can only imagine to an extent of what she goes through. Sometimes I tend to think that she's exaggerating everything to where when she explained things to me, I think that it could have been handled differently. And sometimes I don't want to hear the things she goes through because it's not that I don't want to hear it, it's that it's so repetitive. Like, yes, I get it. But you're going to have to find someone within you to go on with it. I know people need to let go, blow off some steam and bend along and such forth. Heck, I do it all the time. The same phone that I'm recording right now is the same phone that I use when I do my audios. When I record, I use my audio to get everything that I can to get off my chest. Sometimes I don't go to a person. Sometimes I don't because I have my phone. And that's a bad thing too because if when I use my phone, now if I ever do go to that person in the future, it's going to sound like I'm repeating myself because initially I already said what I needed to say. The only difference is that that person wouldn't know what I have said. That person wouldn't know what I have said simply because I have said everything on the audio. Now it's one thing for me to send them the audio, but... I think I rest my case on that point. So that's it for me. That's why I have not been uploading anything on my channel. Will I upload anything? It's an, I don't know. I'm not going to even give you an answer anymore. I always give people answers to everything. And especially when it's a question that they haven't even asked. So I don't know when I'm going to upload. I will hope to upload in the future. I will hope to upload in the month of December. And matter of fact, this video will be uploaded. It may be unlisted. I may end up deleting the video. My mother may end up seeing the video. And she may end up once again telling me to take this off of off of, off of YouTube. Because she may think in her opinion that this is too personal. When it really isn't in my opinion. And she may end up questioning me as such as, as any other videos that you have been uploading that's personal. Then she's once again down memory lane like she has once before viewing my channel. Because at one point, well, no, forget it. Consider that thought being lost. It was not really worth me mentioning. But yes. Me up I used to say on my channel that me uploading videos on YouTube where I can talk about everything and anything but sometimes people don't watch my videos so i don't really care too much to upload it maybe my friends will watch it they say oh yeah i'm gonna watch it but they don't but how would i know that but that's really besides the point at this point i don't even care who watches my video that's not even the main issue that's not even the main issue But that's pretty much about it. I made this video, like I said before, here I am repeating myself, but I'll say it again. I made this video to explain to the audiences and to explain every, to everyone out there my input of the pandemic, my opinion of the pandemic, of COVID, and also what I'm going through at home 
and what I try to do in my free time. That's my purpose of making this video. I try not to get off topic, but it's sometimes it's hard because I don't want to keep on talking about the same thing. And I definitely don't want to keep on talking about COVID because I'm pretty sure everybody knows about it. Yes, as I have mentioned before, everybody reacts to it in a different way. I have already told you how I react to COVID, the pandemic. I, don't, I may not react as badly as everyone else does or everyone else. I'm only speaking for myself. Maybe you can relate to how I feel. Maybe you are able to compare and say, oh, yeah, me and you are the same. I don't react the way how other people react. I react exactly how you react, Corey. But yes, ultimately, that's it. I don't want to keep on going on and on. I don't mean to make this video so depressing and so emo, as they would say. I didn't mean to take it in such a serious tone or make this video so serious, if anyone views it as serious. But regardless of how you view this video, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I won't say the icing on the cake, but at the moment, everything that I said or I thought of, I'm saying it on this on this video. So this is an open this is an open conversation. This is an open discussion. Feel free to say whatever you need to say in the discussion in the, the comment section down below. Any thoughts, opinions, maybe something uplifting, maybe something that would make me feel better. Because I can use that right now, too, for that I have been saying that I don't feel encouraged. So feel free to comment down below and give me your input of and of how you're doing. In the meanwhile, though, I will say this at the very least. I'm honestly hoping that whoever is watching this video is safe, is not ill, is not sick, as healthy as you can be. Don't forget to drink water for that. That's really important. I got my jug right here and I'm ready to drink it. And for the record, don't do what I did because I'm drinking tap water, which is really not a good idea. Boil the water so that you can purify and then refrigerate it. Maybe I should do that, but it just takes too much time. I'm thirsty now. So, but yes. And also, please, for crying out loud, I don't know if this message is going to spread. Wear, wear a mask. That's it. Thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you later on in the future. Peace out.